Welcome back friends of GNK. We're out here standing in a pollinating cornfield, which is the best place to be at this time of year. especially if you got allergies. We're in some prime time for fungicide right now. A lot of applications have already went on. This video is not ahead of the curve. We're in the heart of the battle right now. The health of our corn plants right now is quite good. We're seeing little to no disease. We're not surprised to see little no disease, but understand this. We talked about the disease triangle in the past and it takes the host, which we're standing in, the corn crop. It takes the inoculum, which is our disease, whether it's gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, or tar spot, which is our biggest culprit. And it takes environment. Well, guess what we have right now? We have literally the best environment to set the stage, particularly for gray leaf spot, northern, and now tar spot. So don't fall asleep on this because time is on our side. We still have time to react. And this corn is, is in the middle of pollinating. We're silking and we're not fully pollinated yet. So we have time to react. So let's talk about timing first of all. So our preference is to wait till all tassels are out. So a couple things we got going against us not not necessarily against us but we just got going this year one is a lot of corn is not even in terms of how it's tasseling and pollinating so our preference is to wait till all the tassels are out we have good health in this crop so time is on our side it's best to wait till all tassels are out there's a lot of uneven corn corn that's not tasseling at the same time whereas normally it might tassel in two or three days it might take five or seven days so let all the tassels come out let the pollination process begin so the the term gets thrown around about brown silk and so what happens is is when the ear is pollinated the silk will will turn brown when you're driving down the road and you see all your tassels out once the tassels are out generally in 24 to 48 hours the the ear will be pollinated and from that point on is when we like a fungicide application to go on if you wait till full brown silk where the silk is literally so brown it's about hanging off the ear and about to fall off that's in our opinion a little on the late side we'd rather be on the front end of that particularly to keep tar spot at bay there's a website you can look at to look at the progression of tar spot don't fall asleep on this we are setting up prime conditions for tar spot. It's as close as a county or two away from us, from Illinois to Western Indiana. It's, it's trekking our way. We're healthy today. We can stay ahead of it. Don't sacrifice on that. Tar spot can take us to our knees. We are seeing some diseases just very faintly showing up. So I'll tell you what, that's a good lead indicator as to what's going to come. If you have light disease now at the end of July, early August, that can set the stage for what tar spot will be. So use that as a lead indicator. So we're very pro fungicide on corn, very, very pro. Take care of your crop. So in terms of products to use, there are actually a whole list of very good products. There's a link in this video you can go to and see an efficacy list of product by product. The important thing I would stress is, is you wanna use something that has multiple modes of action, particularly one that contains a strobe and a triazole both. Um, as long as you're following that and you follow the lead on this efficacy chart, you're going to be using a good product. And by the way, they're all very good on tar spot. We feel very comfortable with those as long as they're used. See, these are good tascals. <laughs> Look how tall these beans are. Just kidding. So I wanna address a couple things on beans because we're in the prime time of beans also, just like corn, it all happens at once. When do you go on beans? The good rule of thumb to follow on timing on beans is to count from the top of the plant down. The fourth node from the top, one, two, three, four. When the pods on the fourth node down are about 3 16ths to a half inch long, that's your beginning window. And you have a 10 day period to get that done comfortably. This bean, as you can tell, that pod's more than a half inch. We're in the prime window for this particular field that we're standing in. This is a second variety of fuller season bean planted a little bit later. One, two, three, fourth node down. See how those pods are a lot farther behind? Mm -hmm. I would not spray this one quite yet. I would rather give this plant another five to seven days before I'd be treating this one. 
So that helps you gauge your time. There's a lot of confusion as to when should I go, when should I not go, but hopefully that helps you. Our rule of thumb on fungicides in general is be early on corn, late on beans. Early on corn, late on beans. If you kind of follow that rule, you're gonna hit the majority of the right timings. If you go too early on beans, a lot of these new trifoliates are not protected. So there's no coverage on those. So it's okay to drag our feet. Beans are healthy. There's really no disease starting. I've heard some reports of frog eye leaf spot, but the bottom line is this. We really don't have a lot of disease in beans. What the fungicide does is it delays maturity. It maintains that plant greener longer. Theoretically add to your growing season by applying a fungicide. And that's where you tend to see yield response to. Also, it'll tend to build a bigger bean in the pod. One last thing on beans, I would never drive through my beans without adding an insecticide. It's cheap, it's very inexpensive, and it's very effective. We're seeing some Japanese beetles feeding. There's even some holes out here. We can handle that defoliation, but what we're finding are Japanese beetles. I can see rootworm beetles. I can see bean leaf beetles. And what they will do is they will feed on the side of the pods. They'll scar the side of the pod and then it aborts the bean in the pod. So you will lose beans by insects feeding on the pods. You put insecticide in now with your fungicide, it'll wipe them out. And so it, it significantly lowers your risk for pod feeders. So a cheap insecticide should cost you somewhere around two or three dollars. If you're driving through the field, this is the time to do it. Hey, one last thing I forgot to add. If we're running through beans with a fungicide and insecticide, it's a prime time to add or include manganese and boron. Beans need manganese this time of year. Manganese helps with disease prevention. Boron will help with blossom retention so you can retain a few extra pods. You can include manganese and boron in your mix for not a lot of money. It's a prime time to do it. It's quite the witch's brew. Manganese, boron, fungicide, insecticide, rock and roll something to keep in mind hey thanks for watching this video you can always call us at the office feel free to reach out to us with questions that's what we're here to help with there's a lot of options out there to pick from it can be really confusing now get out and look in your own field so you know where you're at appreciate you watching i'm out you picked a prime time to leave me loose wheel where's my sunglasses